Hey guys, my name is Jacob Avila, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to diagnose aortic dissections. Your probe of choice for this exam is going to be the curvilinear or phased array transducer. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the curvilinear probe over the phased array, but the phased array would work just fine if that's what you have. There are two ways you can classify dissections, proximal or distal. To start off, we're going to talk about looking for a distal type B dissection first because the abdominal aorta is probably the easiest part of the aorta to visualize. The way this part of the exam is going to work is you're going to use your transducer, place the probe marker over towards the patient's right, and start right in the epigastric area. Over here you have the aorta, you have your vertebral body down here, and then the IVC. You'll often run into this issue here about bowel gas getting in the way. There's a couple of tricks that I use. One of them is just to kind of push harder. You can try approaching it from different angles. And right here, I'm going to push a little bit harder, and then the bowel will peristalse out of the way. Here's a bowel with the gas kind of moving out of the way, and you keep on looking at the aorta. You want to get the aorta as proximally as you can in the epigastrum and follow it all the way down until you get to the split of the iliac. So here's the aorta right here, and then right there you see them split into the iliacs. That's how you do a aortic examination. An aortic dissection looks just like what you might think it would look like on ultrasound. It will look like a line in the aorta. This is the intimal flap right here. The aorta shouldn't ever have anything in it, and if you see a valve in the aorta, it's very likely to be a dissection flap. So this is what an aorta without a dissection looks like. We have our aorta over here, we have our IVC and our spine underneath here. You basically just want to follow that all the way down and make sure that you don't see any kind of flap or anything like that in there. Here is a dissection. So here's that same aorta and instead of just a, having hypoechoic fluid inside of it, we have this nice little flap here that's flapping in the wind. You can throw color flow on it if you want to make sure that there's blood flow on the other side of the flap, but it's not really necessary. Basically, if you see anything in the aorta, it's very likely to be a dissection. Here's another one. This one isn't flapping in the wind like the other one is, but it's still a dissection. And when you see it like this, it's more likely to be chronic in nature. Here's one that might be a bit more on the subtle side. You don't see a nice flap, but there's definitely something in the aorta right here. This patient had a dissection. For dissections, as opposed to aneurysms, I usually try to get a view of the aorta in the longitudinal orientation to get a good look for the extent of the flap. So here's the liver here, is the heart up here, this is the aorta, and right there you have the dissection flap. Although looking at the abdominal aorta is easier, it doesn't mean that you can't identify a dissection in the arch. These dissections of the aortic arch are traditionally a bit trickier to evaluate by bedside ultrasound, but it definitely can be done. There are two views here that can be helpful. The first view you want to get is the perishional long axis view, right here, using your phased array transducer with your probe marker, depending how you have it set, either to the right shoulder or left hip. And you want to focus in on the proximal aorta, which is what we see right here. This is the aortic root. You may need to rock the probe a little more to get more of the aorta and less of the ventricle in this view. See this little circle down here? That's also the aorta. So here is a perishional loxus view of a patient with a dissection. So here we have the left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle going into the aorta. There's the aortic valve right here. And that little line right there, that's actually a dissection flap. And this is the right ventricular outflow tract right here. You often will see regurge with this, although you definitely don't need the regurge to diagnose that dissection because you have the flap right here. You can also get a pretty decent view of the aortic arch as a whole by placing the transducer in the suprasternal notch. So you can see here, you have to kind of put a little bit of pressure in that suprasternal notch, and I often have the patient put their chin over to one side or the other so I can get this probe down into the arch. And you're actually applying, like I said, a, a fair bit of pressure, but it's necessary to get this beautiful arch view that you see here. Oh, and to get a good view of that aortic arch, make sure to use your phased array transducer. So here is a zoomed in view of the arch. We have our left common carotid artery, our left subclavian over here. We have our brachiocephalic, and then our aortic arch is this structure right here. Here is that same aortic arch view. You can see that the aorta is dilated, and we have a dissection flap there and another one up here.